Hello again, pupils. Welcome to this session of the Literacy Ladder, where our subject today is comprehension. When we do comprehension, we are simply doing activities to build skills that would help us to understand information in a reading text, a song, or even a picture. For our comprehension lesson today, we would learn about making inferences. So what does the word inference mean? I want you to take your time and say that word again, inference. An inference is something that is probably true. You take the information you read in a text combine it with your background knowledge, or we could simply say what you might know about the topic, and say something that's probably true. Making an inference is like finding a hidden meaning in the passage. Now, why is it important for us to learn how to make inference or how to find hidden meanings? Being able to make inference allows us to connect more with the passage. It allows you, the reader, to understand more what is it you're reading about. So how do we go about making inferences or making an inference? Or how do we find hidden meaning when making an inference or looking for the hidden meaning, we must first use the clues from the text or the picture, whatever it is we are studying. We then try to figure out what we know about those words or the picture, what we can see. And from those two things that we would have put together, we now would form an idea about what we think is going on or what we think the hidden meaning is. Here I have a picture. Let's look at it carefully and let's try to see if we could make some inferences. Take your time and look at the picture. Now, what are some clues we can find in this picture? Remember, the clues, because it's a picture, would be the things that we can see. We can see balloons. We can see a cake. We can see presents. We can see decorations. Now what do we know about those things that we would have seen? We can say that when there are balloons, it might mean someone is having a celebration. When we see presents, it can also indicate that someone is having a celebration. The cake, it's not just a plain cake, but it's a cake with candles. And what do candles on a cake symbolize or signifies? We know that when someone is celebrating a birthday, there are candles on a cake. So what idea can we form from those clues and with what we know about those clues that the girl is having a birthday party. Did you think the same? Did you find those same clues? 
Yes. So the inference we can draw from this picture is that the girl is having a birthday party. Now here I have a passage. We'll take our time, we'll read this passage, and then we will try to make inferences. Sam started to shake as he looked down. This was the only way to get to the other side. He had to cross. He could see movements in the water below him, but he had to be brave. Tommy needed help, and Sam was his only hope. Take a minute and read it for yourself. Now what clues did you find in this text? What can we say about Sam? In the first line, it said that Sam started to shake as he looked down. Can we say here that Sam was happy? Was he feeling good? If you start to shake, how might you be feeling? Scared, maybe? Or frightened, we might say? It also said, as he looked down. It meant that Sam was probably crossing something. Maybe a bridge? If he had to look down? It went on to say that this was the only way to get on the other side. So to get on the other side is another clue. Now we know to get to the other side, we might have to cross over something. And what are some things we might have to cross? A bridge perhaps? The word cross in the next sentence helps us to better understand that he was making a journey over something. He could see movement in the water below, but he had to be brave. Tommy needed help, and Sam was his only hope. What inference can we draw from this passage? For one, we can say that Tommy was in trouble. Maybe he was hurt. So Sam had to cross the bridge so that he could get help for Tommy. In that passage, we use the words. We use the sentences to help us to draw the inference or to make the inference of what might have been going on. Let's try another. Mandy rushed home from school and headed straight to the kitchen. As she walked over to the cookie jar, her eyes grew wide open. It was all gone. 
As she looked around, she saw bits and pieces on the floor. She followed the trail. Oh no, she shouted. Jake was sitting with crumbs all over his face. He looked at her and smiled. I hope you enjoyed that short passage. Now take a minute and read it for yourself. Then let's see what inferences we can draw from this passage. Now, could you spot the clues? Mandy rushed home from school. Now, think about it. If you were rushing home from school, how would you be acting? Would you walk slowly? No, you would be acting very quickly. Maybe you would be walking very quickly or running. And she headed straight to the kitchen. Now, if you rushed home from school and you headed straight to the kitchen, what might that be saying to you? What do we find in the kitchen? Food, of course. So we can say that Mandy was probably hungry. That is why she went straight to the kitchen. But let's see what happened. Let's see if we could figure out the rest. As she walked over to the cookie jar. So we surely know that cookies were in the jar. And if we were asked what is it that Mandy wanted to eat, we can say Mandy wanted to eat a cookie because she was going over to the cookie jar. Her eyes grew wide open. Now, if her eyes grew wide open, why did that happen? It was all gone. Was the cookie jar full? All gone. Gives us the clue that the cookie jar was empty. As she looked around, she saw bits and pieces on the floor. Now, do you think Mandy was feeling good right now? No. She wanted to know where all the cookies had gone. And so she was looking to see if she could find that out. So she followed the trail, which led her to the living room. And what did she see? She saw Jake, who was sitting with crumb all over his face. He looked at her and he smiled. Now, if you were asked the question, who ate the cookies from the cookie jar? Would you be able to answer that question? Well, the passage said that Jake was sitting with crumb all over his face. Now, what do we know about crumb? We know that the cookies will leave crumbs if they're broken or even sometimes after we eat them. So, what idea could we form from 
the clues we were given, and what we know. We can say that Jake ate the cookies from the cookie jar. Did you have fun making inferences from this passage? I hope you surely did. Now, always remember that when you are making inferences, it turns you into a detective as you use the clues and you try to figure it out. Wow, isn't that amazing? You can be a detective. So remember, look for the clues in your passage. Think about what you already know about these clue words. And then you try to form an idea. That is most times probably true. Well, boys and girls, that's our lesson for today. Try reading a story and make inferences or find the hidden meaning based on what you read. That's all for our lesson today on making inferences. Do have an awesome day and see you next time.